All right, I am Sean from MoparEcoDiesel.com. I am an owner of a 2014 Ram 1500 Eco Diesel, and I'm going to show you uh, how to look for problems with your exhaust system, and kind of go over uh, as lightly as I can without taking an hour. Exhaust smells normal, not normal, inside the cab and outside the vehicle. So the first thing you want to do is. If you're smelling a very strong, weird smell uh, with your truck, no matter if it has one mile on it or 100,000 miles on it, the first thing you're going to want to do is grab a flashlight, come out to your vehicle at your airbox, and you're going to look back here in this area, and you're going to see a reflective uh, aluminum-looking cover that goes across your firewall. If that is black, or if you see any streaks of black, you have a cracked bellows that comes from your turbo in a flex pipe that goes down to your catalytic converter. Okay, that's your first spot you're going to look. The next spot is you can also see this if you look straight up, crawl under your vehicle right there and look straight up, you can see that tube. Okay, if there is no leak there, it's obvious, it'll be black as hell. If there's no blackness around that, you're not leaking. Okay. So, this truck emits three distinct, unique smells, and they are all different, and they all mean different things. Now, these are based on my experience at 60,000 miles of owning this truck, and um, let's start with the exhaust pipe, okay? The most normal smell that you're going to smell is a clean water smell. It'll be crystal clean, it'll smell like the cleanest re uh, resort water falls in Brazil. It's absolutely, uh, undeniably clean as clean can be. It smells wonderful and fantastic. That is when your DPF filter and your catalytic converter are completely clean and your truck is running the best. You're going to get your best gas mileage and you're going to get your best performance out of your truck. Okay, let's go to stage two. Okay, this is, the, this is the next step in your vehicle's smell line. This is the next one that happens. The next smell you're going to have is you're going to jump in your truck uh, when it's been sitting overnight. You're going to get in it, and no matter how long you let it uh, warm up, uh, you're going to run to McDonald's or the bank or the grocery store, and when you come to a stoplight, uh, you're going to smell an extremely strong uh, burning smell while you're sitting there. And, I mean, it's undeniably, undistinguishably uh, something burning. Now, what I thought was uh, the smell comes and goes, and you think that it may be some stickers on the exhaust pipe or uh, maybe... Uh, you know, some burn-in smells. Uh, this turbocharger and exhaust system is actually wrapped and I'll show you real quick. Uh, that right there, that thing that you see, that's a sock back there. Uh, that is a, a heat shield sock. You would, I thought that it was like that burning in. That's a normal smell. Uh, when I used to wrap my headers with header wrap, uh, you'll get a burning smell. No, this is, this is different. This is a really strong, strong odor. Um, uh, a burning smell. Okay, so that smell if you come back to your exhaust pipe, uh, sometimes you'll see black smoke kind of coming up and trickling up. You'll, see, you'll just see like a little bit of very, very small, faint um, black smoke coming up, just barely. Uh, that's sometimes, and it's unreproducible. You can't make it do it. It just does it. Now, you would think, now check this out. You would think that you're, uh, it's because of high EGT temps. No, it's not. You'll look at, my, I have a computer that reads that, and my exhaust temperature could be 400 degrees, and I can sm still smell that strong burning smell. Okay. Um, the next smell that you're going to smell is a, um, let's say you wash some clothes in the washing machine, and you left it there for three days, then you put those uh, towels and or in your socks in the dryer and you started the dryer 
but you didn't quite dry them all the way and it's kind of when you pop open the the dryer it's uh, uh, kind of that moldy mildewy kind of musky smell because they're still a little wet that is the next smell that is the most common with this truck and that will permeate in the vehicle when you are driving down the road and you come up to a stoplight and you sit there for a second that is another smell that you're gonna smell constantly in this truck okay that is the most common smell the burning smell that one comes on yeah, about like every thousand miles but the nasty wet moldy socks uh, or the shoe the stinky shoe smell that is your next most common smell that you're gonna smell in this truck um, now what that means is you're getting ready for a regen that you're starting to soot up you're starting to build up and you're getting ready to do a regen uh, now the last and final smell this one is the one that is dangerous. This one's the one that pisses me off. And I know pisses every other owner off. The last smell is when you are driving down the road and you come to an intersection and uh, God forbid that back window there is open or any of your side windows are open because it'll be worse. Um, you come up to an intersection and all of a sudden some weird fucking smell comes in and it starts overpowering your lungs and you start choking and your eyes are burning and your throat from your nose to the back of your throat is stinging and burning. Um, that, I can explain what that is, but that is the last and final smell that this truck emits. These are all common. Every owner will experience it. You all will have it. And... Uh, the last and final smell that I'm talking about that burns your eyes. What it is, is your vehicle is going through a very, very, very powerful regen where it is dumping a lot of death fluid into the hot selective catalyst reduction system. And it's hitting that and the urea and water mixture is coming out the back in a very, very high quantity. And when you're stopping when you're coming up to a stoplight all of that air that your vehicle has been displacing and all of that mixture comes is still moving at your speed that you were going and it will catch up to you if you're the last vehicle in the line of traffic and it will all rush in and if you got your window open your sunroof open like I have you got your windows open uh, that f that smell will permeate your cab and you had better be on your window switches to roll down your window and I'm not the only one with that problem. Uh, a lot of other owners are starting to finally come forward and uh, say the exact same story. Okay, so um, the some of the smells you can link to your um, uh, your temperature gauge inside of your vehicle, and I'll go through that real quick, and I'll show you what I'm talking about now. I really, really, really strongly suggest that every owner of an Eco Diesel go out and buy a Scan Gauge 2 or some other device to monitor your exhaust uh, temperatures. This is critical for this truck. And this is why. Alright, so on my Scan Gauge I have my Boost, which I verified with an actual gauge, a mechanical gauge out there on a port. This is the temperature I'm talking about right here. It's going to be your C11. And it's going to come up in no matter what kind of uh, system you have. But it will be your C11, your CAT11. Okay, so my exhaust... Alright, so I uh, got interrupted there. Alright, so anyway. So this temperature right here you can see is my catalytic converter temperature, 180. Uh, this is my gallons per hour and my actual load that's on the engine right now. Okay, so what is important... All right, and this is how to prevent most of these smells. Um, when you see this temperature go, I'm going to explain the normal temperature ranges. Idle temperature, no matter how long you let it idle, your normal temperature is going to be about 240 degrees, no matter what. It's going to be 240 at idle. 
Um, driving around town, your normal temperatures are going to be uh, 40, I mean, sorry, 400 to 540 during the winter time. Uh, your normal summer temperatures are going to be anywhere from 400 to 640 to 700. Towing a trailer around town or lightly towing it, or even on the hottest days, you'll never get over 900 degrees. Your absolute maximum critical temperature is going to be 900 degrees driving around town. All right? If you are anywhere over 1,000 degrees under any circumstance, it has nothing to do with pulling a hill, has nothing to do with how big of a load you have back there. You are in a regen. And why I say this is because if you turn your truck off when it is at anywhere over 1,000 degrees, it is not completing what it needs to do. When you turn it off and you go to restart it, you are going to have a 100% chance of having either the burning on fire smell or you're going to have the ammonia smell, the extremely powerful ammonia smell. Now, the extremely powerful ammonia smell and that other smell, you you can't see it on this gauge. You'll never know sometimes, and you can't predict by this gauge if you're going to have any of those smells or how well the regen system is doing. I have other software that I'm going to be doing other videos to show, but the reason why I have this is because I can go to work or I can go to McDonald's or I can go to Wyoming without hitting high temperatures at all. And then literally right when I start pulling into the parking some parking lot somewhere, this temperature will shoot clear the frick up to 1400 degrees. And I've tried correcting that with, uh, I used to think that it was because of my usage like a normal diesel, high usage and high towing. And I started trying to control it with a water system. Oh my God, that threw this system in a total loop. I mean, it, it, it wasn't because of uh, my temperatures that, you know, my, my boost pressures and my temperatures towing a trailer up a big hill that was making my temperatures really high. It was the regen system, the active two regen system. So anyway, this is really, really important. Watch your temperatures. And when you pull into a parking lot, before you turn your truck off, make sure that this temperature is under 900 degrees. Yes, better, uh, lower is better, but, um, and better for the turbo, but uh, when it's under 900 degrees, that you're definitely out of a regen and you're not risking any kind of damage to your catalytic converter, your SCR, your turbo, or your EGR system because it, for one, is completing what it's trying to do. And two, uh, you don't have the temperature fluctuations and the variations that uh, come with an instant off with really, really high temperatures. 1400 degrees Fahrenheit is really, really freaking hot for a turbo and your your exhaust system. So um, I haven't had any kind of problems with my truck and I've been following this procedure since this truck was brand new. This, this gauge is pretty old. Um, it's not really as good of a gauge as it would be for a Ford. Any of the Ford diesels, they're fantastic with this gauge because every parameter is available. So pretty much these four are what is available with the scan gauge, but if I was to buy all these gauges separately and install them, I would have a big mess of wires and hoses and tubes and shit in my truck. Uh, this is just clean, simple, and easy. has all my gauges right here. Um, and, and it was cheap. It was like 250 bucks. But I, as a warning to all the owners of these trucks, watch your temperatures. Don't shut your truck off until it's under 900 degrees. Uh, that will keep your uh, EG, your regens and your your emission system in top shape. Um, yeah, I have 60,000 miles on her now. I haven't had any problems with my truck um, besides my paint. That wasn't Dodge or the or me. That was the dealer that finished my truck. But um, you know, following that procedure and doing that has has been really good so far. Um, like you can see, I've got 60,000 miles on her right now. I mean that that's my truck so and I let this idle a lot okay just so people know I let my truck idle quite a bit and I've never seen the active 3 regen system which is your emergency regen let's see if I can get that light to kick on and wow so it's the same light bulb alright you nerd okay 
So it looks like it's the same light bulb for all three systems. There's a glow plug, fuel. All right, so they're actually using the same light bulb for the systems. Yep, oh, it came on real fast, okay. Let me try it again, all right. So it's your first yellow light that comes on next to the red light. And here we go. Yep, boy, that was fast. But it is there, that regen light is there. But that's only for the emergency regen system. So, um, anyway, I hope uh, this video will help people um, kind of understand this truck and kind of its normal or non-normal uh, smells. But at this point, there's nothing mechanically wrong with my truck. There's no reason for me to take this into a dealer and say, hey, fix it. What the fuck are they going to do? Everything works correctly. They can't replace things and hope that it'll work better than when it was brand new. So, you know, at this point, basically, it's due to the uh, Prius drivers and the uh, government and the green people. Um, yeah, I do like to have a green, clean truck, but because of the emission system, uh, what are we going to do? That's it. You know, it's federal law. Uh, look at this box truck right here. You know, look at the emission system on this thing. I would not want to change that filter out. So, you know, there are some other ones that have even greater systems. Oh, here, I can show you right here. So you see this flex tube? This is what's breaking on the uh, Dodge. So coming right out of the turbo, uh, it, back there in the firewall, is this exact tube right here. One of these. Every vehicle has them. And it's just cracking right there at the at the beginning. In fact, you can see this one did it too. This one broke too, up there at the top. So, you know. Alright. Well, thanks for watching.